I think the biggest thing that that I, that makes me enjoy football, besides you know being a former player, is the fact that football's hard. It's not for everybody. But what football provides you is an opportunity that, you know, if you can conquer those things within football, you know, like uh, the conditioning and the strength training and the long hot days in August and things, the sense of con conquering something that's hard is going to make you better in life because it's not about if, it's about when adversity hits and your ability to overcome that instead of cowering down and, and submitting to it. You know, what are you going to do when you have a bad day at work, when, when stuff isn't going right, and you have to sit down and figure it out or work with somebody to figure it out if you're part of a team and everything else. And, and, and to me, that's what football does, and that's what they've done. Kind of frustrating with the uh, COVID situation and everything. It was also exciting that we got to play because there was so much speculation about if we were going to play or not. So, Yeah, it was definitely different considering we didn't even know if we were going to play or not. And then when everybody's going to conference play, once they did decide that we were going to play, it was kind of like a big question, where are we going to go because we don't have nobody to play. And the MOAC joined, it was just kind of like a relief and exciting feel to play big teams, competition, and it was just kind of exciting to think about. We couldn't really have like that family mentality that we normally had at, at the beginning of the year. And I thought towards the end of the year in the postseason, we started picking it back up and having fun and practice with each other and all the younger guys talking to the upperclassmen and the varsity guys. So I think it was just tough starting out knowing what to do and how to do stuff with all the COVID guidelines. I think the ability as a coach to help kids grow through something like that so that Outside of sports, they're going to become better people, better fathers, better husbands, better community members because of that sense of, I can conquer anything with work ethic and a good attitude. We can only control what we can control. What we can control is we wear our mask. What we can control is how we spend our life outside of football. The seniors, I'm just going to say it out loud, they're, they're a special group to me. Um, I love all of them the same. But these seniors really persevered in this, in this time. Not all of them, but uh, Ethan and Goose and Lane, their junior year of basketball got ended early. They come back for their senior year of football not knowing, but they kept working. They had, they had goals, they wanted to get to their goals. You know, they saw adversity. To be able to take that, that I, me, and my uh, component out, that transformation and then those kids figuring out that they have the ability to work through anything as, as a coach, as a parent, as a community member, you know, that's a uh, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty awesome thing. You know, just thinking of the season as a whole, what was the 2020 season for Cam Webb? Just enjoying every moment I could. I'm in. Obviously, we want to go out and win, but just my senior year, just try to enjoy everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we all grew up together, and surprisingly, uh, Lane Harper, his first year here, I was really close to him. I was close with him in Loudonville, and kind of, I got him to come here, so. You know, it was awesome, you know. Felt the brotherhood, and everyone was so welcoming, and just felt like family.
I've had more opportunity. I coached them when they were in Pee Wee. And uh, so you kind of know going in what, uh, what they're capable of and everything. And for them, especially coming off last year's season, everybody, and, and then we hear it every year. Oh man, how are you gonna, you know, how are you gonna replace this person? How are you gonna do better than this? And everything else, and I'm like, you just, you don't get it with, with this group of kids and everything else and how they developed and how they stayed together. Small group, you know, definitely, definitely one of the smaller uh, senior groups that have, that have been through Lucas, but man, uh, they, they were dedicated. They were dedicated to, to, the, to the program. They're dedicated to each other and, and underclassmen. They come back for their senior year of football not knowing, but they kept working. They had, they had goals. They wanted to get to their goals. Obviously, we didn't reach everywhere we wanted to reach, but uh, those guys with their leadership, they're quiet leaders. They're not the rah-rah guys, but they did a phenomenal job of still keeping the team focused on the task at hand and doing what we can control. No matter how it looked, you know, the six games and then the playoffs and all that, uh, just to have the season was a huge thing and huge focus for us because we care so much about our kids and they deserved it. That's the thing that was uh, I was most proud of our season. I mean, you, you, of course you love the success and you love the tradition and the stuff that we've created with postseason runs and things and, and playing for the championships, but being able to finish our season on the field for our seniors was was a huge, huge thing for me. I thought we needed to come in as leaders because last year you had Logan and Tommy as those big leaders out there. So I thought we had to come in and kind of lead lead the team and show them how to how to do it. You know, one of the things we do in our program is off season senior leadership seminars for our our incoming seniors and to get them ready to build that toolbox of being a leader. And one of the first things that we, we start out with is, it can't be fake leadership. So if, if, if you're not a rah-rah guy, and you haven't ever been a rah-rah guy, and all of a sudden you show up at practice or weight room or a team meeting, and you suddenly become a rah-rah guy, your teammates know that's fake. So leadership doesn't mean being just being a rah-rah guy. It's being within yourself, picking your teammates up, and getting them motivated to work towards a common goal. And while they were quiet, they weren't any less of a leader than the vocal people. You know, last year we had a group of leaders that were very vocal, very outgoing, not, not scared to put that leadership out there, you know. Uh, this group led more by action. But I think the key component in all of them is they know each other loves the guy next to them and that they're willing to sacrifice for that guy. And, you know, that's kind of how we define love. Because, you know, in the male-dominated sport, the minute you start talking about love, everybody kind of gets queasy. But love to us is sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice for your brother? See, when I saw it, I didn't even realize half the things we've done. Because I don't really think about all the, the achievements and everything. Just more playing the game, just wanting to win. But it was kind of like eye-opening to see that yeah, we, we were pretty good, even when you feel like, ah, well, we, we could have been better and all of this, but it was just kind of eye-opening, like, wow, we were really good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's special for sure. It was fun. I'd like to say I'm the greatest center in Lucas history, if I do say so myself. But uh, just going through all that stuff, even as a young kid, it kind of, like, you don't really realize how special it is until it's over leave it all out on the field. I mean, every senior has told me that for um, ever since I've been in. And they said, just just leave it out on the field. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. And uh, I'm finally experiencing that. So uh, yeah, I just, I hope they give it all they got. And truly, I know they will, so. Anything's possible. You see, at the beginning of the year, we didn't have a schedule. We didn't have, we didn't know if we were going to have a season. But Spade kept us tight, kept us knowing what to do with all the guidelines and stuff and kept telling us to stay strong, stay focused, stay on the course and just keep doing what we do and everything will turn out fine. Um, buy in, put on some weight, hit the weights, it's kind of simple. You just don't take anything for granted because you don't really realize how much football means to you until you play your last snap and realize you're never going to play football again. So I think that like after JFK that kind of sunk in. That you're never, that you're never gonna play a snap of football again. Just enjoy it while you you can.
Well, you know, cross our fingers, we'll get out of this pandemic stuff, but uh, football wise, you know, we've got a great group coming back. We return eight starters on defense. We've got a good nucleus on offense coming back. We've got a huge junior class, a 20 member junior class. And like I said, they don't know anything but playing for regional championships. So the expectation level is still gonna be there. It's just past the torch to time. You know, I think everything looks positive, but you know, those things happen because we put in the work. And so, you know, now it's time to, after the holidays here, is get back to work and, and get towards what we want to accomplish in the fall.